Hello there, this is Aaron Mean of the Irish Otaku, and welcome to the first real proper video I've done on the channel. Okay, the last video that just went up was the introduction, or channel trailer, whichever way you want to call it. This is going to be the first proper discussion video, and as the title says, we are talking about the price of video games in Ireland. Now, have you ever wondered where is the best place to buy video games in Ireland? Be it the latest AAA game or the next indie hit? Well, worry no longer, as in this video, I'll be helping you find the best place to buy the latest video games in Ireland. But before that, let's talk about the physical video game store landscape in Ireland. Now, before talking about that, I want to make sure that by physical video game store, I'm talking about stores that are either dedicated to solely selling video games or that more than 50% of the stock in the store is dedicated to video games. And with that said, I am excluding stores that, such as CEX or The Rage, as they are considered second-hand stores, so I'm talking about new games throughout. Now, before I talk about what physical stores there are, I want to go back. Let's go back to the 90s and early 2000s. It was a great time, because let's just have a look how many, game, how many uh, stores there were. As a different distance, there we go. Look at that. There are there were six stores: Game Station, HMV, GameStop, Game, EB Games, and Smiths. Now, some of you may recognise some of these stores, and some of you may not. In probably in particular with Game Station and maybe EB Games, because EB Games is really considered. An Australian store I that's why I always hear about this it mentioned now but EB games did used to exist in Dublin for a long period of time for those who lived in who live in Dublin a uh, there used to be one on Henry Street if you go down via O'Connell Street there used to be an EB games then there's a little bit down if you go near Arnett's where GameStop is GameStop used to be there and just up from GameStop used to be a game, and just up from game used to be a HMV. Now, also I'd like to point out, Smith's actually used to be called, the, the video game section used to be called the Software Zone at Smith's. I don't know why, but they got rid of the Software Zone part and just called the whole thing Smith's. It's probably easier for branding. And now let's have a look at what, what stores there are now. We've gone from 6 to 2, GameStop and Smiths. So what happened to those other four companies or in stores? Well, GameStation was sold to Game in 2012 and all the GameStation stores take, took the game name. EB Games was merged with GameStop in 2005. And just as GameStation was bought by Game and rebranded, Game left Ireland in 2012 when the store fell into administration. And I believe the only Game stores now are in England. As for HMV, HMV is an interesting one because the store fell into administration in 2013 with the majority of the stores in Ireland closing. Then it was rescued from administration and I think one or two stores reopened. I think it was only three stores reopened. I think the major one in Dublin was on Grafton Street and it was moved to a very much smaller store. But HMV continued to have problems and the last three stores or so were closed. It's a big shame because I actually liked HMV a lot. They're very good although they did kind of try to continue with their online store, and I didn't like HMV Online. So, as you can see, like I'm actually going through this on the fly. I want to make it more professional. So now we're going to look at the car, the price of video games. 
Now, as you see, we have at least two de dedicated game stores. But for this, I want to have more stores. So I decided we're going to add the likes of Argos, which are a big catalog uh, store that basically you just go through the store, choose one a catalog, see if they have it, and they take it from back. It's a kind of a giant warehouse kind of system. Also, I've selected Amazon Dakota UK, major, major online retailer for Ireland. And I've selected digital stores, so Amazon.co.uk, UK, PlayStation Store, and Steam. Although with some of the PC games I'm going to talk versions I have PC games, some of them might not be on Steam, and so I'll talk about the alternative uh, digital game they're on. So without further ado, let's look at the first AAA game. Say so the yeah AAA game. So here we are. The AAA games. Now, as you can see, the example I'm using is Anthem. This is the standard edition on and across the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. Now, what's the first thing that grabs your attention? Price disparity is actually quite big if you think about it. GameStop are charging $69.99, Smith's charging $59.99, Argus $59.99 as well. Amazon.co.uk, 55 euros and 11 cent. Now the reason why this price is like that is it's sold in pounds on the store. And basically what I did, I let the Amazon's internal currency conversion get the price to euros and that's what it is, including delivery. Well, including free, free delivery, apologies. PlayStation Store, 69.99. Xbox Store $69.99 again, and the EA Origin Store is $59.99. Now, I find it very interesting with that. The digital options are actually as expensive as the most expensive physical version. And the cheapest version is Amazon.co.uk. So what we're looking at for the AAA games is, if you're looking for the cheapest option, Amazon.co.uk wins, but if you want rapid, quick delivery of the games, so say you want to go into a store on the way home and pick it up, your best option is Smith's or Argos. And there is a good selection of Smith's and Argus's throughout Dublin and throughout Ireland, so it's a good choice. So if you, like me, aren't overly fond of going to GameStop, you have a good alternative. Now, let's look at the double A games and I shall bring up that list now. And I believe for the double A game, we're going to be talking about Call of Cthulhu, the official video game from Focus Home Entertainment. This one is a bit tricky because finding a double A game is very surprisingly difficult because what contributes is a double A game and I've always heard that Focus Home Entertainment is, inter sorry, Focus Home Interactive. I'm so used to calling them entertainment, I don't know why. But Focus Home Interactive is the best for AA games. So I picked the most recently s released Focus Home Interactive game, which is Call of Cthulhu. And straight away, you find something interesting. GameStop, 59 99 So they're charging 10 euros less than they would for a AAA game. Smiths, unfortunately, do not stock the game. Argos charging $48.99, about 10 to 11 euros cheaper than the AAA version, AAA game they sell. Amazon.co.uk, uk thirty three seventy one Again, nice big drop. PlayStation Store charging $54.99. Xbox Store charging fifty four ninety sorry PlayStation Store charging fifty four ninety nine and Xbox Store charging fifty four ninety nine so about the same price and over ten euros cheaper than the AAA game and of course finally we have Steam which is charging forty four ninety nine so once again the Amazon.co.uk wins out for the cheapest which is always good. And if you want physical qu copy quickly, Argos wins at forty eight ninety nine. But if you have a PC game and PC, if you have a PC, 
you can get the best bargain with forty four ninety nine on Steam. And that isn't always the case for all games. Like you I'm actually quite surprised how expensive GameStop were. I think it's because it was a physical game. I honestly don't really know. Next up we have indie games and for this I picked The Occupation which was just recently released and it offers a nice disparity I think. So let's bring up the list. And here we have it. GameStop charging the most again for at $34.99 and that's for an indie game that struck me. So I was like that's very expensive for brand new indie game like indie games are never really considered that expensive and after that we smiths and argos unfortunately do not stock the game amazon.co.uk once again winning out at 24.72 next up we have the playstation store xbox store and steam which are all charging 29.99 although if you have playstation plus PlayStation, sorry, the PlayStation Store version is only twenty six ninety nine, which is always good. Although that's, I believe that was a launch promotion, so it's probably gone back down to twenty nine ninety nine. But that is always fun to see. So again, GameStop are the most expensive. I think it's a. As you can see, there's a clear pattern there. GameStop seem to charge the most. But before like, I reach my conclusion about why some of the prices like this, why are some so high, why are some so low, I want to talk about what's the comparison like to uh, other countries in the EU. Well, I don't actually have a list up here, unfortunately, for it. But just get rid of all that stuff. So for AAA games... If you go to the UK and you go to a game, you're looking at $49.99 for Anthem, I believe was the game I compared it to. And if you go to a currency conversion, that was $57.99. Which means that it's actually close enough to the price that Amazon.co.uk UK were charging with 55 euros and 11 cent. And a lot cheaper than any of the physical stores or digital only versions we talked about earlier, which is interesting to see. Next, let's see how the other game stops throughout Europe charge. As we we saw earlier, Ireland was charging sixty nine ninety nine. That's the Irish game stop. Germany was the same price. Italy charged a bit. More with 70 euros and 98 cents, which I find to be quite interesting. Austria was the same. France, which they sell it via Micromania, same price as 69.99. And Finland, smidgen cheaper at 69.95. I say a smidgen, that's four, four cents, so I think that counts as a smidgen. So, conclusion. Why are so with the conclusion, I want to talk about, first thing I want to talk about is an interesting comparison I saw with digital and physical. Now, logic dictates that digital versions should be cheaper because there's less, there's less process in the chain. Like you don't need to get packaging done, you don't need to look for stores to sell it to. Especially for companies like Sony and Microsoft that have their own dedicated online stores and sell a lot of their own first party games. Now, I couldn't find any reasons why they still charge so much, but logic dictates that it's for a larger return on investment. Video games are very expensive nowadays. A AAA game, easy cost north of 100 million. I mean, I believe Grand Theft Auto V, the development alone, cost $137 million. That's amazing. So you want to make as much money back as possible. That's the, that's the, the end and end all of any developer or publisher. They want to make their money back. So it's a larger return on investment. And personally, that's why I believe digital stores are a lot higher than you expect. Also, with other companies, we have 
store co- stores take a cut. They're selling they're selling the game, so they want to make profit. And I was looking this up, and some of it was kind of difficult to find. But I managed to get the store cut costs off about three different stores: two digital and one physical. So Steam takes a twenty-five to thirty percent cut on sales, which is quite large. I believe it's actually this is actually the largest in the list. Next up is Epic Games Store, which controversial, very controversial, I suppose, in some aspects. But they take a relatively low cut of about twelve percent of sales, and that's the reason why a lot of companies like Ubisoft are looking towards them because you remember. Out for Tom Clancy's Division 2 outside of the Uplay store, the Epic Games store has the ability to sell that game, which is you which is unusual because Ubisoft always go with Steam as well to kind of cross sell. But once again, as I said before, they want a larger return investment, and if they're looking at from a pure financial point of view, Epic Games 12%, Steam 25 to 30 it's quite an easy option. Now, looking at the last one, GameStop. So, this is a hard one to find. Some people were saying something, some people were saying the other. It's believed GameStop take about 5 to 15%. So, that's about €3.50 to about ten fifty on each game. Which doesn't sound like a lot, but they eke it out eventually. And... For GameStop, a lot of their income now is from secondhand games or accessories. And that's why you see GameStop stores pushing secondhand games, which is annoying. So, as I was saying again, the final point of conclusion is the cost of production. As I was saying, Grand Theft Auto V cost $137 million to de- develop. That's excluding the marketing, which was $128 million. Now, of course, this is the very high end. That's probably the most expensive development and marketing marketed game. So not all of them cost well over $100 million. Some actually cost less than $100 million, but you want your return on investment. I think a good example of this is the new Tomb Raider series that Square Enix published. I believe it was the first one, it sold north of a million copies and Square Enix was like, oh, it didn't meet our expectations. This is why games are so expensive to develop a market and then they have to see, oh, well, let's see, we factor in, okay, we factor in development, factor in marketing, we have to go to stores, how much are they taking? Oh, that's a big cut. And of course, obviously you're excluding all the other stuff. Double A games are interesting because they are a lot less. Uh, I couldn't find any accuracies, but Focus Home Interactive. Their expenses for like fiscal year 2017, 2018 was about 80.4 million. And they're publishing arms, so you can't get an exact figure because we don't know how much, say, Cyanide Games, which is very much published a lot of their games, who developed it. Games they develop, they publish through Focus Home Interactive, so we can't get a good example. But it's still an interesting spe- idea about their expense of about 80 million. So you can see the big difference. And you can also kind of see it when it comes to marketing. Now, obviously, I don't know how. I love that 80.4 million probably is marketing. <laughs> and that's across multiple games, like Grand Theft Auto V, $128 million. One game. I believe Focus Home Interactive released three, four, maybe five games in 2017, 2018 fiscal year. So they obviously didn't spend a lot less per game. And that's the downside of AA games. So you don't get out known as well, unfortunately. And with indie games, indie games can be a tricky beast with their cost. Because they can go from anywhere to a few thousand to a million. And that's excluding the likes of uh, Star Citizen, which their crowdfunding has gone crazy. Their crowdfunding is like that of a... Tri- the development cost is that, that off like a AAA game. 
like I just mentioned for Grand Theft Auto 5 it's insane and that's why why indie games do fluctuate a lot in their prices as you can see if you go into Steam Store or go into Epic Store or Uplay Store or whatever there's so many uh, PC game stores now it's kind of ridiculous but I hope this is so I hope this discussion was interesting and kind of shed light on why some stores charge so much and why AAA games, AA and indie games vary in price. And I hope this actually helps you when you're going out shopping. It's like, oh, Division 2 came out or Anthem if I want to torture myself. What's the best place to go? Where is the best bank for my book? It's like, oh, I can go to Amazon.co.uk, but I want to play the game now. Let's look at the digital prices. Oh, it's a bit expensive digitally, isn't it? Oh, but I'm going on. Uh, I'm on the way home from work. I think I'm quite close to Smith's or quick close to Jervis Street Shopping Centre. I might go into the Argus there and grab one. It makes. What I want to do with this video is make you think about the prices. Not just to find where the best place to go is, but also why some stores charge so much. It's basically all about return of investment, really. You want to make a profit. That That's everything for this video. But before I go, I want to start something new, and it's... Something quite fun. This is the Irish Otaku. Now, Otaku is very much like Japan. And as I said, I'm very much a fan of Japan and Japanese. I did study it for three years. And I'm actually relearning it. And as I relearn, how about... Let me help you guys learn some Japanese words. So at the end of every video, every main video I'm doing, I'm going to have a Japanese word that you can learn alongside me. And this is the first word I've learned in a long time, and it is motto, as in more. So it's pronounced mo, it's like mo, to, motto, motto. And let's use that in a sense. So motto, as in subscribe to the Irish Otaku for more videos like this. Yes, I, <laughs> That actually was an intention. Like, when I originally thought of it, it's like, oh, more. That's a good one. It's like, oh, I can work this into a marketing. Or push the subscript, push you to subscribe instead of giving you this, oh, please like, favor, and subscribe. Let's make it work better. And I hope it did. And I'm going on a tangent. So, uh, thank you very much for watching this video. I'm actually going to take this down for now as I finish talking. If you see my head go, it's because basically I'm doing all the transitions on the fly. And I think it looks a lot nicer because, well, it could be easier. It's like, oh yeah, I can just do it in post, but really, who wants to do it in post? So I hope you like this first video. I'm, I'm now, I'll probably get, if people do comments like, oh, you did this wrong, you did this wrong, you did this wrong. And in there, it might be, oh, you did this right. It's like, that's what, it's like, yay. Also, question is, and you have criticism? There is a comment section. Do not hesitate to give me some criticism. I love criticism. And by criticism, I mean it has to make sense. Not just, you suck, you should stop, get off YouTube, etc. It's like, oh, here's how you can do X thing better. Because you can see, like, I was having, I was pointing to the images I was actually going that way because I keep forgetting mirrored so I hope you like it I'm hoping to release more videos soon I might do oh excuse me there I might do some videos like discussion videos like this and in between I might do a little vloggy video of talking about some random stuff and I have a few ideas for that also I have a few ideas for Helping people find out what type of video is each through a color coding, which will be nice. So thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you again. This is Aaron Mean from the Irish Otaku saying thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you all again.
Goodbye.